Okay. And um, do you have any memories of uh, wrestling Sid Justice? Yeah, we did the, the when I was uh, bullying McGurk, Mike McGurk in the ring, and then Sid come out and made the big save, and uh, well, it was just a short-lived thing, and uh, Sid uh, did the big power slam, and for a 290-pound guy at the time, I come up pretty easy with that, didn't I? <laughs> I actually just recently saw that match. It was pretty good. Um, now, now, my next question for you is, uh, you know, and we talked about this a little bit before we went on the air. You had the opportunity to work with some guys who passed before their prime, like Davey Boy Smith, a.k.a. the British Bulldog, and Kerry Von Eric. Got any memories you can share of working with those guys? Oh, well, yeah, I, I, I do. I mean, Davey Boy, I, I could tell you, I would let him do a standing suplex with me on the concrete. That's how good he was. And Kerry was just a, what a super guy this guy was. Uh, when I broke in down in Dallas, his father was good enough to let Pedusas and Pletchich, uh take me into the ring uh, at the Sportatorium. And, uh, you know, Kerry, both, both were class guys. I really enjoyed the time I got to work with them and uh, be on the road with them. Yeah, of course, they were both uh, phenomenal athletes. Now, in 1991, you left the WWF. What was the reason behind that? The main reason was my kids were starting to grow up, and uh, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to be with my family. I mean, that's the bottom line of it. It seems, uh, you know, as I sit back and people uh, with the entourage of the Internet and doing interviews like this, certainly YouTube and the Internet, has resurrected a lot of guys like myself and, and actually brought the characters back to life. And, uh, you, you know, I, I, when, when it comes to goal setting, I can distinctly remember before I went into the ring, before I actually uh, was able to go in, I visualized myself in Madison Square Gardens. I distinctly remember this. And when that match was over with Kerry Von Erich, uh, I remember coming out of the ring and saying, I'm done. That's it. So I didn't set my goals as, as high as I should have, but I remember saying, okay, I achieved what I wanted to achieve. And it was like I said, that's it. I'm done. Now, of course, you know, you're still in phenomenal shape, of course, through your nutrition business. Have you ever thought about giving it one more run? No. No, I haven't. I, uh, I, I do a lot of strength training for some MMA guys, uh, uh, Mark Coleman's Hammer House, uh, I train with those guys. I'm very active in uh, youth and high school wrestling. In fact, I'm a high school wrestling referee. Uh, we we have a gym here in Steubenville that uh, has been deemed a, uh, a regional Olympic training center, so we're getting ready to open that up. And uh, so my, my focus is on that. My, my kids are grown up now. Uh, in fact, my oldest boy, he's going to be in Vegas here next weekend, uh, for the police Olympics, he's going to be doing some submission wrestling. And uh, the youngest boy, Bronco Busick, uh, he's playing at West Virginia middle linebacker. Oh, wow, very cool. Now, you know, of course, uh, you know, and I've brought this up a couple times, currently you own Big Bully Nutrition. Can you tell our listeners about this and what your motivation for starting it was? I, I have a couple cardiologist friends uh, that wanted to start this business, and uh so we had bought, uh, there, there's a chain of fitness centers called L.A. Fitness. And inside L.A. Fitness, they have a franchise cafe, uh, which distributes protein shakes and all your nutritional stuff. And uh, I had had a, uh, a sudden death cardiac arrest on, on a treadmill. And so I just started researching a lot of these supplements. And, uh, and I've been around it my entire life. I mean, I... I we sat and figured, uh, my, my boys and I, and they said, Dad, do you realize that you started this when you were 15 years old and, and you're 56 now? You haven't, you, you average three to four times a, a week in the gym and you haven't missed. So I've been around it forever, probably lo- more than, longer than you guys have been on planet Earth. And uh, I still have a great passion for it. And, uh, so the sudden death cardiac arrest issue came up and there's, uh, a lot of athletes are familiar with, with stuff that's called nitric oxide, and that's a, a gas inside the blood that uh, promotes circulation. 
Well, they also use it uh, for, for heart conditions. And so what I did is I took that and, and I put it in a, in a protein bar. And that will be in your local GNC stores here uh, first week in September. So here's a shameless plug. Walk into a GNC store, ask for the Bullies Nitric Oxide 5000 bar. I'll definitely have to put that on our website and in the recap as well. Uh, one of our listeners, Wacko Bob, actually sent in a question of, what is your memories of working with Mari Gennetti on the independent scene? Uh, I got a chance to work with Mari and, Sh and uh, Shawn Michaels down in uh, Georgia. Uh, they were they, they were certainly there. Their career was starting to peak. And uh, we were at, uh, I believe it was Marietta, uh, uh, Marietta Georgia. And it was one of the shows. Kurt Henning was on the show. And Jerry, needless to say, Jerry Blackwell had the resources to bring in all the top names. So uh, the, those guys, if you go back, uh, they they were along with the Rock and Roll Express. They were, that's when flying really started to happen in the business. I would agree with you on that. Um, another question from one of our listeners is, do you have a river road story you can share with our listeners? Pardon me? Uh, one of the questions that was sent in is, do you have a rib or a road story you can share with our listeners? Ah, let's see. <laughs> you sort, there's so many of them, you sort of took me off uh, took me off balance on that one. Uh, certainly my time with the Iron Sheik has always been nothing but favorable. How many times we've walked into a gym and, you know, the Sheik is so serious that uh, you, if you were on a piece of equipment or something and you were just bullshitting, the Sheik would... She would, the sheik would go off on somebody if you weren't in there training. So we had a lot of fun time with that. And uh, uh, there's a host. There's a host. Mr. Wrestling too uh, would be coming back from a road trip, and uh, he wouldn't let guys out of the car to stop and use the restroom just to torture them. Dick Slater. There's another guy who, who just went out of his way to help me. And uh, so yeah, there's there's a host of stories, but they're all all favorable. Now, you actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you just brought up Mr. Wrestling 2, who actually is currently in a hospital after suffering a heart attack. Um, when was really? I didn't know that. Yeah. When was the last time you talked to him? Yeah, it was just reported a couple days ago that actually he was uh, put into the hospital for after having a serious heart attack. So. Well, uh, and maybe after the show, uh, you can shoot me an email and give me some updates on that. Is he still in Hawaii? Um, no, actually, he's in Charlotte, North Carolina. The actual news, it says, Pro Wrestling legend Mr. Wrestling 2 suffered a heart attack and is in the hospital. There's an address as well where you can send encouragement. Well, good. I'll have to make sure I do that. And, uh, yeah. you know, we just have, like, one more question for you, and uh, that's what does the future hold for Big Bully Busick? Well, right now uh, I'm chasing the youngest boy uh, in the college football scene. I'll be watching that. Uh, he also has a, 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 a very, both boys had big wrestling backgrounds. Uh, he may jump back into the wrestling game because he's definitely a wrestler that's playing football. So I'll focus my attention on uh, just being a dad and a fan of college football. Uh, continue to do the strength training with, with what athletes I have and uh, working with them, high school referee. Uh, my daughter's an, actual, an animal control officer and a canine trainer. So uh, big bully Busick slice filled up. Uh, Chasing the wife around uh, with no kids in the house, I get to play slap and tickle once in a while with her. She's probably going to kill me for saying that, but uh, <laughs> you know she she uh, she she ran the roads so many years up and down, and always was a great encouragement. And uh, yeah, I, I got to give her a big plug too because when I told her that look, if I'm going to make it in the business, I got to either get to the NWA or the WWF, and uh, you know, she worked and supported us while I went out and worked all these independent shows in order to get my name out there. So, uh, you know, i got to give a big plug to her uh, and, and, and the way she did things, uh, feeding us. I know Sid, Sid and she and myself would come home from the workouts and she'd have a big meal prepared. And So, you know, I'm very active. I'm very, very active. 